Yeah. Okay, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Denver Bear and Oil. Today, we're going to be doing another DIY on oil pump stuff. I'm gonna help you guys save some money if you're doing an engine rebuild. New ones from BMW are around $500 or more, depending on what you get. Um, so I'm gonna show you today how to rebuild it. It's very easy, but you need to be aware of a couple things. So, first I'm gonna show you how to disassemble it, and then I'm gonna show you a couple differences between oil pump models. Uh, they're mostly the same. There's really only three things you need to know, but we'll get into that here in a minute. So, first thing you need to do, if the oil pump is off the car, you've already done this, uh, but you need to remove the oil pump nut, which I have already loosened, obviously, because I'm taking it off by hand. Take your gear off. These are reverse thread. So it's righty loosey, lefty tighty. Okay, so once you get those off, then again, I've already loosened all these, so we're gonna go ahead and just pull them out. You take these four 10 millimeter M6 nuts out. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna show you an easy way to tell the difference between an early oil pump and a late one. I've taken apart an early one as well, so I'm gonna show you that too. The part number on the outer cover, although it looks exactly the same, and I believe they are interchangeable, the part numbers are different. One uh, is 1740967, and the other one is 1722901.9. So the early one, the one I'm holding in my hand, this is the early oil pump. And I will show you why there's a difference. So once we get this cover off, at this point we can remove the rotor and stator. This is the rotor. So I'm gonna show you an early one and what the difference is. This is the early pump that I pulled. And as you can see, they're volumetrically different. So you can see the difference in size there. Mm -hmm. This will fit in the late one, but this will not fit in the early one. And I wouldn't even try to run this because you're probably not gonna make any pressure anyway. So make sure whichever pump you're rebuilding, you get the parts for. I will list the part numbers for the late model, AKA the, the larger oil pump rotor. So if you're rebuilding an engine, use an M52 or S52 oil pump. The early ones are not quite as good. So once you get these out, go ahead and set all my old parts in one area. I have to give her a little bonk. There we go. So this is your stator. So at this point, you've got all your guts out for the most part. Uh, we're gonna clean this here in a minute, but first, what I'm gonna do is take out the oil pressure relief valve. It's pretty simple, but you are gonna need snap ring pliers. So you'll see that there's a snap ring right here. Just get that little sucker out. Okay, we got the uh, snap. snap ring out. So now I'm gonna, I gotta try to get this valve out. Maybe a magnet. Okay, so uh, I have the privilege of having an ultrasonic cleaner at my disposal, so I was able to throw that sucker in there for a couple minutes and give it a couple bonks and she came right out. But for those of you who don't, I'm going to show you what the assembly looks like. So basically, the piece is going like this. You have your plunger. This is basically where the retainer goes. And then, yeah. So as you assemble it, it's gonna look like this. Here, here, and then your snap ring keeps the whole assembly in. And this is your oil pressure relief valve. So when we put it back together, after I have this all clean, we're gonna use a new plunger, new spring. Uh, I can't remember whether or not I have a new one of these. I'm gonna check my ECS order. Um, and then I believe I've got the new O-rings, got everything to make it go back together nicely. So I'm gonna clean this up and then I'll show you how to put it all back together. Okay, cool. All right, so got the pump mostly cleaned up. I'm actually gonna end up doing this again on my own time because I seem to have lost the O-ring that I needed to replace. So I'm just gonna put it back together to show you guys how to do it and then I'm gonna redo it later. But don't reuse this O-ring. That's like one of the most important things to replace when you're doing this. So as you can see, before you rebuild it, you're gonna wanna pry this Teflon O-ring out. This one's actually still kinda springy, so it could still be okay, but regardless, I'm gonna replace it. Not worth the risk. What we're gonna do is take part number right here. This is for your oil pump valve. Take this little fella. And we're going to insert into our nice clean housing. And when you do this, uh, make sure that you pre-lubricate everything with oil. 
Again, I'm not doing this because I'm going to do it again. But you're going to want to soak all this in oil before you put it all back together. Then you got your spring. And then your piston with your new seal on it is going to go on. And then you press that whole sucker down. Put your own ring in it. So I will do that again another day. But what I can do is reassemble this. So I'm going to grab some oil. We're going to lube this up real quick. You don't want anything in there because if you mar this, you're going to be reducing the effectiveness of your oil pump. So make sure it's nice and clean. And if I had more housings, I might go change out for another one. It looks like this oil pump at one point in time got something in there and it's got some marring right there, but I think we'll be okay. What I'm gonna do is just take some of this oil. What type of oil is that? Oh, this is just manual transmission fluid. It doesn't really matter what kind of oil you use. You just wanna make sure that it's not dry metal on metal. Just a lubricant. Correct. Get that guy nice and oily. Whoop. Oh yeah. That's some good action. Great action. Okay, so we got that on there. Then I'm gonna take my oil rag here. Trusty AKA sock. AKA dirty sock, plain sock, old sock. Just don't use your crusty sock. If you have access to an ultrasonic cleaner, I highly recommend you do that. Because it will get all of the little tiny particulate off of everything, so. I did clean this up a little bit with the ultrasonic cleaner, but not long. I'll probably do it again. Reassemble like so. Get your bolts in. Throw your bolts back in. Um, and now is also a very good time to do an, either an oil pump lock nut kit or to tack weld your oil pump nut. Um, highly recommend doing that. Everybody says it's a problem. I've actually never experienced it happening, but I don't want to. So. When I uh, put this back in my S50, it's gonna be going in an E36 M3, but when I put it back in the car, I'm gonna make sure that it is tack welded on there. So I'll show you how to do that here in a second. The torque values are gonna be listed below. So when you put these back on, make sure you torque them to the right value. And those values, again, are below in the description. So check that out, we'll have part numbers for you. And we're gonna have the, uh, the torque numbers for all of these bolts. I'm not gonna do that right now, just because I wanna show you how to get it back together quickly. If you decide to go the cheap route and tack weld your pump, you're gonna wanna put your nut on. And then I am going to tack weld it when I do it, once or twice to the gear, and then once or twice to the shaft. I would recommend just doing it to the gear, or let's see, let me think. Just do it to both. You're not gonna rebuild this twice, let's be honest. And if you do, you can find another oil pump core. So just weld the crap out of it so it doesn't come off and you don't blow your engine up. Tack weld here, tack weld here, tack weld here, tack weld here. Make sure it's nice and clean. You can clean this up uh, to get a good, a good hot weld on there. Uh, before you put it back on, just clean it up with a wire wheel or a piece of sandpaper. That concludes how to build your M50, S50, S52, M52 oil pump. And you can use either of these new or late models on any of the engines. They all bolt up. The castings are the same, as you can see. So one of these is, well, close to the same. There's a few small differences, but one of these is from an M50 and one is from an S50. This is early, this is late. You can also actually use an S54 oil pump. It's the same bolt pattern. And that's actually, if you guys are building a high performance motor, a, uh, an S54 oil pump machined to the proper depth. So the depth on the S54 is about the same as the M50, but it spins at higher speeds. So if you machine that extra 10 or 15% at the higher speeds, you're looking at, a, at about, I think 20% increased oil flow. So if you're building a high performance motor, recommend you find yourself an S54 oil pump core and have it machined deeper. So what you need to do is you get all the guts out of it, take it to your favorite machinist and have a machine this lower surface, this bottom surface, you have a machine it deeper to match your new rotor. And so if you just give him your new and old rotor, rotor, he'll know how much to take off of it. And you should be able to make yourself the equivalent of an Achilles high flow oil pump for way cheaper. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, comment. If you guys wanna see me do more stuff, let me know and uh, we can do it. We've got lots of parts, lots of cars and lots of things to do. So thanks for watching guys.